Headline number four, fast food chains, checkers and rallies are rolling out automated voice ordering at the drive-thru. According to chain store age again, checkers drive-in restaurants, which operates checkers and rallies, will roll out Presto's automated voice ordering technology to all of its approximately 260 stores or restaurants during 2022. The news comes after Checkers and Rallies conducted a detailed pilot program of Presto's automated voice ordering technology at multiple locations over a four month period of time and found that the solution delivered a high level of automation and accuracy with reportedly over 98% of drive through orders completed with minimal intervention from restaurant employees. Now, Jonathan, back to you. We just I just did a panel at NRF with experts from NVIDIA and Lenovo, and I asked them, I said, where are we going to see AI impact retail the most in 2022? And I was shocked to hear them say voice ordering. So my first question is, what is your take on this headline? And would you be advising clients to make similar investments in this space? Yeah, so I saw this and uh, I was reminded I may have got the source of the quote wrong, but wasn't it Steve Jobs who said that voice was the ultimate user interface? And uh, I think he's been proven right. Um, uh, now, I think it's interesting that we're seeing this in the restaurant sector, and I think there are a bunch of reasons why it's particularly salient and why I think perhaps more traditional kind of grab and pay uh, retailers should just pause for a minute. So a few things. One is that in the restaurant sector, uh, one of the things we've seen with uh, screen based uh, uh, customer ordering is that the customer trades themselves up. So the business case is driven, initially people think the business case is driven by labor savings, but it's actually driven by higher ticket. Because whenever the consumer's faced with the choice of whether to trade up, when someone asks them, they're less likely to do it than when they privately choose to do it. So technology allows sort of private guilty pleasure and you know adding that Sunday and toffee fudge and all that sort of stuff without anyone else knowing. Um, so I can see why voice um, in this sector, especially with intelligence driven suggestions, is very conducive to the consumer. It's very friendly. It's a very easy way to drive the business case. I, I just think we need to think about what are the other environments in which the consumer can do this using voice. It's not going to work. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see how it works in a traditional store setting in, in, in the aisle. I do think, though, there's this real interesting question about does it allow us to displace a whole load of ordering out of the store using our mobile device? Uh, because that's a voice based platform. So is that where it takes us? I don't know. I, I, the thing I'm uncertain on is where it expands. I completely get it in the restaurant sector. Yeah, this is cool. We're going to go deep on this, too, because I think you just raised a ton of points that I think I think our audience deserves us to go at a very low level into. David, what do you think? Well, I agree with Jonathan um, on the, you know, it, it does drive a bigger ticket, but I, I think we'd be remiss to not talk about rising wages, uh, labor shortages, uh, anything you can do to automate in retail and or restaurants, I think tends to be a good idea in the current environment. And if you can do it in a way that's, that's pleasing to the customer, it feels like a no brainer. Do you, do you think that the, the dynamics of quick service restaurants be it versus like a traditional retail environment playing this at all? Like, would you be in, advising clients in quick serve to look at this more closely than you would say traditional retailers? I think this technology is probably more applicable to quick service restaurants than it is to a traditional retailer. But I think, you know, call centers and other places like that that retailers operate, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. And what do you think? Yeah. I mean, what I love about this is it's just another tool in the tool belt for, for retailers in general, particularly QSR. I mean, just because you're deploying QSR ordering does not mean that it's, you know, shifting the entire model to removing people from the, the operation. I think that, you know, we talked to a company just at NRF Vistry AI, who's, who the founder, um, Atif, was saying like, look, you don't have to, you, it's not one or the other. It's, you know, you can have, you can dial it all the way back to, you know, you have AI taking orders and serving the customer. And the only point of contact that your brand has with the customer is handing the food off, you know, directly to the consumer, or you can have, you know, somebody checking this. I think it, it solves for so many things and lets the, the QSR 
uh, retailers, especially dial up or dial down, depending on, you know, where, where, what staffing looks like that day. Like, did somebody show up for work that day and do they need to completely automate the, the drive-through process and can they put staffing, you know, onto, onto other, other places throughout. And I think also, you know, as we take, start to take this into other retail applications, um, I think it's, it's only going to, you know, QSR is only going to train the customer to, you know, know how to do this as we get into maybe apparel, you know, use cases or customer service use cases. So I'm 100% in for this. Uh, that's it. See, that's interesting to me because I think there's, I think there's some, there's some subtle points to this that I actually, that I would, I would attribute to a big epiphany I had at NRF and I don't remember who we were interviewing. Yeah. Um, it might've been Kroger at the time. I think it was Kroger where, um, you know, they said where you can find standardized processes that happen the same way over and over again, those yeah. are tailor-made for AI to work really well. Right. And so when I look at the quick service restaurant injury industry with ordering at a menu, you've mm -hmm. got a small subset of items. People are generally doing it the same way. They're may probably making the same types of substitutions over and over again. Yeah. Maybe you don't want pickles on your big Mac, but like that's easy to understand versus when you start getting the adoptions in like customer service relationships, or even Jonathan, like you said, ordering on my mobile phone across 120,000 plus SKUs at a Walmart, you know, give or take like that becomes infinitesimally more complicated. And so that's why for me, I'm still like, I see the use case in QSR, plus it can be buoyed by the, the, the employee that's still there, right? They're not gone out of this equation. I mean, they even alluded to that and the fact that you yeah. know, they still have someone there in the article. Um, so that I think makes the application very different. Where if I was advised, me personally, if I was thinking on the retail side, um, I wouldn't be jumping into this as much as say, using AI for delivery optimization, Sure. Um, you know, AI forecasting, inventory monitoring, computer vision for inventory monitoring, things like that. Those seem like better use cases for me than focusing on voice. But I don't know what you guys think if you have any last thoughts on that. Well, voice is super simple, right? So again, let's, um, let's play an imagination game, right? Which is let's think about a, a, a fast growing uh, model, which is all about convenience and is the platform is technology based and the assortment is relatively edited and uh, where you'd like to be able to trade people up to expand your margin. Well, I'm thinking something like GoPuff, right? So I, um, I wonder, you know, I wonder, I think in edited assortment, high convenience factor retail, right. it's interesting. That's a, that's a great expansion on that whole argument. David, what do you think here? I tend to be in your camp. Um, I do think that the, the more the more narrow the, the assortment or the, the, the list of items, the better this will be. Um, that said, I think Jonathan's point is very valid that in, in targeted uh, kind of more controlled retail spaces, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a fascinating point too, because we've talked about instant delivery and you talked about it being like such a hook psychologically, if then yeah. they can make the hook so much easier from a facilitation through voice, the voice ordering, Holy crap. I mean, we just, we just ran into a really good territory that I had no idea we were going to go into today, but, and what do you think final word? Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing you have, you can't think of voice alone either. So as a retailer who's investigating this, you know, I, yeah. I, I would say, yes, you should be invest investing resources in voice and how it applies and works with other elements of your business. I mean, Chris Rupp said, you know, when we interviewed her at NRF too, the uh, chief digital officer of Albertsons, they're applying AI to buy it again orders. And so I think when you start to tie those things in of like what's AI pulling from you to choose from to narrow that selection when you do have a hundred thousand plus SKUs in a store like that using voice with that I think to me makes makes sense so it's not acting alone.